Okay, so um, we are studying about the law of connection and how it relates to our plexus business. And this is from John Maxwell's 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. Um, some of the leaders within my team and I are studying this, and I'm so privileged to be a part of an amazing group of leaders. So connection is so important. Um, when it comes to working with people, if we touch someone's heart before we ask for their hand, as John Maxwell says, it it's all about the law of connecting, and we're more able to get somebody to do something for us or to work for us or to um, work hard for us. Um, people want to feel validated. They want to know that you care about them and you have empathy. It's kind of like if you went to a restaurant and you went and sat down and your waitress came up and all she said was, what do you want to eat? What do you, what do you have? Your connection with her is not going to be very great. However, if you're sitting there and she comes up, how are you guys doing? Oh, I love that. I love that shirt you have on. Or um, are y'all having a good Monday? Like, is it she cares? She's showing that she actually cares about you and that the law of connect to, connection increases. And I guarantee you're going to give her a bigger tip than the other person. So with regards to our potential customers, ambassadors, this is a super important law to to partner with and to do and to learn. Um, and we can all learn how to connect. When I started my Plexus business, I did not realize the importance of this law. I did not realize the importance to build relationships within our business. People don't care how much we know about something until they know how much we care. And that's hard for us as leaders because we get overwhelmed. Right now I have over 600 people on my team. I can't connect with everybody, but I try, try to connect with as many individuals and as many people as possible. So you want to know how, how do we connect? What do we do? Well, the first thing that I really feel that we need to do, and John Maxwell um, says this as well, is we need to connect with ourselves. And a lot of times we'll think, okay, we know how to connect with ourselves. We know that that's important. Sure, I know, I know myself, I'm pretty in tune with myself, but think about it this way. What would you be if you knew, what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? Like, what is that thing that you knew that you would do if you knew you wouldn't fail? Think about it. Think about it because fear is so just intertwined in that, right? What would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? Another way that we can connect and to know ourselves and to be grounded within our connection within ourselves is know our 90 second elevator speech, if you want to call it. And it changes or it's not changes, but it's different. It's different for who your audience is. Like know your 90 seconds that you want to talk to somebody and let them know who you are what you believe in, what your values are, what's important to you. Same within our Plexus business. Someone asks you about Plexus, 90 seconds. You've got 90 seconds to make a good impression and to talk to them about how it's helped you, what it's done, what it is. The more that we are in tune with our 90 second speech, the more we're in tune with that, the more grounded we are in ourselves. And we're able to connect with others. Um, what are your core personal values? That's very important to connecting with ourselves. What do you believe in? And that helps us to determine our priorities. Um, and then make sure every day that you're living up to those values. What makes you happy? Think about back when you were 10 years old and you're dreaming and you want to be something or you want to do, or you're doing something that truly makes you happy. What is that? Let's say, for instance, that your family is what truly makes you happy. Are you going to take a job that you're traveling for 85% of the time? No, because that's not, that's taking away from your happiness. So therefore you're not, you're ignoring the important thing to you that connects with you. Um, think about this question. If money were not an object, how would you live your life differently? Now, it's not really about the money. It's more about the thinking, the thinking outside of your norm, the thinking outside of your daily life. Because unfortunately, and especially I know as moms, we tend to put our aspirations, our dreams, what we would do on hold, and things seem so out of reach financially. 
but you know you may not be able to do these things but it helps us to expand our thinking and to develop a plan to work towards the goals that we might imagine so think about it if money were no object how would you live your life differently what would you do answering these questions and knowing yourself can help with all that negative self-talk which comes in our brain every day um, we all have it it's that i'm not good enough i can't do that I, i'm not imagine yourself beyond that imagine yourself where you want to be and visualize that okay so connecting with yourself is super important to connecting with other people um, and those those are some ways to figure out how to connect with yourself now when you're connecting with other people you need to be sincere and authentic it goes back to the saying that my mama always taught me if you don't have something nice to say don't say it at all be authentic be sincere know your audience know who you're talking to learn people's names if you're not good at people's names don't don't sit back and go i'm not good at that figure out a way to be better figure out different methods different strategies to learn how to do better um and one of the things that i do is when i'm having a conversation with somebody and they're like oh on you know on the 15th of next month i'm getting married well, after the conversation, I go into my calendar and I write it down a couple of days before, you know, just so I can remember that, you know, Hannah's getting married on the 15th and you need to, you know, send her a message, let her know you're caring about her. And I want to know, you know, I mean, life gets in the way. There's so much going on in our lives that I don't mean not to remember, but that helps me to remember. Um, live your message, practice what you preach. Don't expect your team, don't expect your family, your children, don't expect your friends to do what you want them to do or what you're telling them to do if we're not willing to do it as well. It's kind of like, don't complain about something if you're not, were, if you're not willing to live what it is that you're complaining about to the best of your ability or do something to change it. Go to where the people you're trying to connect are. Um, remember that the world does not revolve around you. It is not, it's not the Marianne dog and pony show. It's not, it's not my deal. I want to go where they are. I want to, when I walk into a situation or I walk into a group of people, I really want to walk slowly through those people. I want to take time to individually connect with each person. I want to adapt to the situation. I want to be coachable and trainable, not only from the people trying to lead me, but from a situation. Like it, it's okay that it's outside of our comfort zone. It's okay that it's not the norm, but, and so adapt to it because that is going to show the people you're connecting with that you care. You're not judging them. You're not looking down on them. Um, focus on them. Focus on the people you're trying to connect with, with not yourself. Um, like I said, it's not the Marianne Dog and Pony Show um, that someone someone reminded me of that yesterday in a conversation um, that a pastor actually told her because she was counseling with them and the pastor looked at her and said, it's, it's not your dog and pony show. Remember, it's not about you. It's not about me. It's not about us. It's about the people we're trying to connect with. How can we serve them? How can we listen to them and actually listen to them? Put the phone down, look in their eyes. Focus on what they're saying, not on what you're going to say next, not on how you can solve their problems. Focus on them um, and believe in them. Believe in them. Sometimes there's people that we meet and they're like a two on a level one to ten on leadership. They're they're a two on or three on where, you know, we think we are. Um, but if we look at people with the potential that they have, with what they are, could be um, and treat them that way as their potential treat them as if they are the leaders that they are supposed to be or they want to be um, then that connection is huge and it helps us with communicating we're more able to communicate with them um, as leaders we really need to take the responsibility to be those connectors um, as leaders we need to reach out we need to take that first step. 
if we want somebody to follow us, if we want somebody to join our team, I have found that it's very important not to try and convince them of it, but connect with them, gain their trust, gain their respect, connect with them, love on them, serve them. Never underestimate the power of connections and building the relationships before asking them to follow them. I have always found within my Plexus business that building that relationship first, loving on them and serving them carries so much more weight than just trying to sell to them. Hopefully this helped. I love connections. It's something I feel very, very strongly about. Connect with your people. I know you can do it. I know you can connect with them. Reach out to two or three people today. Reach out to two or three people today and just see how they're doing. What's going on in their life? What are they thinking about? What are they struggling with? What are they feeling? And then see what happens.